guess I do a quick mail day video. Uh, just uh, four cards I picked up this week. One vintage card and three ultra modern cards. Um, so so very ultra modern that they were quite literally uh, printed in the last thirty days. So it should be should be pretty quick. This is 1954 Bowman. This is Eddie Matthews, and uh, it's a gorgeous card. Uh, I'm I'm really glad I'm going to add it to my collection. I'm going to submit it for grading, and it's going to get a um, it's not going to get a very good grade, and not because there's some uh, wax staining or what have you on the back of the card. It's because there's some subtle little hairline uh, creases on the front of the card, and the sort of wrinkles or creases that are that um, I suspect were probably on the card stock when they printed the card. And I say that because there doesn't seem to be any color loss or uh, loss of gloss where the uh, the crease appears. Uh, and so if a car gets damaged and it, it bends, you know, usually there's some paper loss or there's a break in the surface and, and, and you'll see a, either a loss of gloss or color there. And I don't see that in this case. But still, it's a significant physical flaw to the car, so it'll, it'll, get, a, it'll get a little gray. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I don't. I don't mind things like that. I, I like cars that look nice, and this one looks looks nice. Uh, and I and I um, generally I, <laughs> but I overpaid because I, I wasn't aware of the, the technical flaw, and uh, you know, quite honestly, the seller probably didn't notice it either. It was that subtle. But um, you know, generally I like to buy those half scores, those half. The things that, especially a three and a half or a four and a half or, or what have you, because often those cars look superior to the the higher grade, even sometimes the next higher grade, because they usually have just this, a technical flaw that uh, requires the grade to be at least a certain floor score, and uh, and they're allowed to give the extra half point simply because the rest of the properties of the car are so much nicer. So I think this card probably would have fallen in that into that category. I'm going to submit it for grading to SGC shortly, and I and I would guess it comes back uh, yeah, three and a half, four and a half, um, three and a half would be my guess because I think if it has a crease, it should it should be a three, um, uh, at least in in that part of the criteria. So we'll see. Um, beginning to finally make some progress in this set. This is a set that I I kind of deferred. Completing, I, you know, I've completed the the uh, 50 and the 51, and uh, very nearly uh, finished the 52 set. Uh, I've made progress in 53, which I would prefer to finish that one first. Um, but I, I this set is is growing and growing and growing on me, and uh, I really wanted to pick up this card, and I would like to pick up uh, the Johnny Logan card as well, uh, and then probably you know um, turn around back to the the 53 set. Already completed 55, um, so Bowman. I, good gracious, how in the world did they ever lose the bubblegum more with with tops? Just really fantastic cards. Uh, I wish they uh, were still around today. And I know you're going to say there's Bowmans today. There are not Bowmans today. That was a separate company. It wasn't a brand. It wasn't a label. These were, these were people that were co competing with one another. So. In any event, let's look at the modern cards. Uh, there's just three of them, as I said, and two of them are these all-star rookie cup cards. Basically, they chose a, an all-star rookie team, and, and two Braves players appeared on that, which makes sense because they were number one and two in the uh, uh, National League Rookie of the Year um, balloting. Uh, this was your winner in the National League. Uh, the National League Rookie of the Year can't even be distinguished as a rookie card for the curious and puzzling and uh, befuddling rules of Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association, you can't you can't call this a rookie card. He's going to start his sophomore season, uh, and I guess they'll put the rookie card logo on there, even though he's, he probably isn't even eligible for the Rookie of the Year vote that year. I don't ask me to explain it. They use this term "call up." And you see that in the lower left corner. And so this is a call-up card. Absurd. The rules are peculiar. Um, 
Spitzer Strider gets the rookie card logo, even though he played significantly less than Michael Harris because he was a pitcher. But boy, was he on fire! And he he just throws strike strikes and he he strikes people out. And uh, I think uh, if someone's going to throw a no hitter for the Braves, it's probably going to be Spencer Strider. The next no hitter in the Braves franchise is probably going to be Spencer Strider. And it's been a while. I, th- I want to say it's I th- I want to say that that Kent Merker through the last no hitter in maybe 94. I think Merker threw two no hitters, but one of them was a combined one in, in 91. I think uh, I, I should be able to answer this question more definitively because I have been researching it, but uh, it's been a long, long while since, since an Atlanta brave has thrown a no hitter. And I think this is probably the most likely candidate to do it. But if it wasn't him, it might be this guy, Kyle Wright, you know, he led the league, the National League, in, uh, in wins last season. And he was kind of under the radar because uh, Max Fried had a lower uh, ERA and because uh, Spencer Strider had, was throwing more strikeouts. But this guy just straight up won more games than anyone else in the National League last season. Uh, so uh, this is a guy we should probably be paying attention to. I mean, the Braves' rotation... They're so young. Are they going to pitch like they did last year? Are they going to be able to be consistent enough? Or is this going to be one of those years where they grow? Gosh, I don't know. But Max Fried, Kyle Wright, Spencer Strider, and perhaps Mike Soroka back. I mean, he was an ace before he tore his Achilles. This could be shut down Braves pitching like we haven't seen since early to mid-90s. If that's the case, wow. The Braves could be really, really good. So these are all the um, Topps Living Set uh, Braves cards that exist. And, uh, you know, there's quite a few I need to pick up. You know, the tragedy is I had most of these cards at one point and and, and ended up selling um, um, a, a Topps Living set the first two two years that they put it together and ended up selling it. Uh, so I, I'm going to try start trying to piecemeal this thing back together again. But uh, it's a neat, neat set. I, you know, if you're a vintage collector uh, and you collect 1953 tops, you should really, really like this set. Uh, it's really well done. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to them continuing to build on it. They've been doing it since 2018. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin... Getting these cards graded again. I picked up 10 of the Kyle Wright cards and I'm going to submit the, the, the nicest two to grading and I'm just going to you know sell the others and, and, and get whatever I can back. But uh, uh, I think it's a gorgeous set together. Very consistent. Even though there's, I guess there's two artists now that do all these imagery, all these images, it's still very, very neat. Uh, in any event, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you later. See ya.